I don't know, I, I can, I'm going to tease the end of the season because I, I, I love how the end of the season, it's kind of the perfect ending to this arc and beginning to a new one. What's up you guys? Welcome back to Clever and our brand new set and I wouldn't want to kick it off any other way than with my girl Catherine McNamara. <laughs> Kat, welcome to the studio. Thank you, it's lovely. It's so good to see you. I feel like creepily I know what's going on in your life because of social media. <laughs> do you ever feel like that with people? Like you're like, I love your dog. I, I liked do. your dinner last night. Yeah, well especially with friends that I haven't seen in a while. You know, you go up to me like, hey, and then, and, and, oh yeah, we haven't talked about this, but I know everything that's happened in your life in the last six months because I follow you on Instagram. But you know, it's a mutual thing. First off, Shadow Hunters. Thank you. High five, break down this whole experience because I'm personally a big fan of the series already. It's based on Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments book series, mm -hmm. and it takes place in sort of a, a world where all the legends are true. So every fairy tale, every creature, every monster, everything that goes bump in the night exists in our world on a plane where humans or mundanes can't see them. You know, as our story kicks off, Clary Frey, 18-year-old art student in Brooklyn, finds out that she's a shadow hunter. Which, which is, is? Which is a half-angel, half-human being whose sole purpose is to fight demons. And uh, throughout the first few minutes of the episode, her mother is kidnapped and her entire world literally comes crashing down around her and she's forced to start anew and sort of literally rise from the ashes. You've been a part of some incredible projects. How does this one already stand out for you like well, in it's, a new way? It's, it's really amazing because it's kind of everything I've worked for for so many mm -hmm. years is finally coming to fruition and it's too good to be true at this point. It hasn't quite hit me yet and I, I think that's very okay. But you know, Shadowhunters is, is great because Clary is a character that I can really grow into and grow with. You know, she's got this great blend of strength and vulnerability that ebbs and flows throughout the season and I, I've read all six books and so kind of seeing her journey and where she ends up makes me really excited to see how the television series takes a spin on that. And the cast is incredible. Take mm -hmm. me back to the audition process because Dom Sherwood, what an awesome guy. He yeah. must be so fun to work with too. He's a blast. Did you guys already know each other we before? Did. This is such a small world. Yeah, it's a small world. Dom and I had been friends for a while and you know when I was initially reading the script for the pilot, I went, well, Dom's perfect for this. He's There's no one else to play Jace and of course, He's cast. Um, but I, I remember going into the chemistry read knowing that he was going to be there and it, it was very, it really put me at ease. Because mm -hmm. knowing that there was somebody in there that you already know and already trust and already have a relationship with, it's really easy to build the chemistry from there. But it, you know, it's really great because the entire cast just ended up meshing immediately. Mm -hmm. We all come from such different backgrounds that we really learn from each other personally and professionally, or at least I, as the youngest one on the cast, learn from all of them. Mm -hmm. And it, it really turned out for the best. And this is such a cool role for you. I love mm -hmm. that you say you feel like it's something you can grow into because being a fan of the books, the character really grows so much. What are we gonna see in season one that you are allowed to share with us? Season one, Clary kind of has this journey of going from knowing nothing about this shadow world to the beginnings of becoming a warrior and the beginnings of becoming you know, this this person that she is going to end up in and just really growing up. You know, a lot of these characters, what draws people to the story is that it's their humanity more than the fantasy. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, young people growing up and falling in love for the first time and figuring out who they love and who they are and what that means for their other relationships. And it's really special and, and uh, I don't know, I, I can, I'm going to tease the end of the season um, because I, I, I love how the end of the season is kind of the perfect ending to this arc and beginning to a new one because every character essentially gets what they want by the end of the season. And yet, in getting what they want, they're broken by it and they're destroyed by it. And so it it's the end of one journey and the beginning of the next. Oh, you're killing me! <laughs> I have to get my mom back. She's in more danger than you can possibly imagine. I can't lose her. You won't. We won't. We haven't even talked about how steamy this show, I'm guessing, is going to be. It gets pretty steamy. It must be a tough day at work for you, Kat. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, you know, it, it's so different than life because it's it's work and it's a right. scene and, you know, but when you have that already established trust and that already established chemistry and, and when you're so close as kind of a cast family, it makes it so much easier to just get on set and play and find mm -hmm. new things and really go to those emotional places. The fans are so passionate about Jace and Clary and their relationship. You know, something I've learned about talking to so many different fans through Comic-Con and the different events that we've done is that when you read a book, 
like this, your imagination adds so much to the story. So you have such a personal relationship with these characters and these people, these characters become these people's heroes. And so when we're tasked to bring them to life, it's it's a huge responsibility. And we, we definitely don't take that lightly. You know, our whole goal in this is to do justice to the story and to these characters that people love so much, but to do so in a way that's still a new perspective and a new lens and something that's a little darker and grittier and, and a new way for fans to experience the story that they love so much. And also, I mean, book series, TV show, we've mm -hmm. seen Pretty Little Liars, which has been an incredible you know, book series turned television show, mm -hmm. but there have been a lot of differences between the show and those books. Right. What's the situation going to be like with Shadowhunters? It's very similar to okay. the route that Pretty Little Liars took. I mean, we, we definitely stay true to the story and the characters, but we take a different pathway. So the first season, you can kind of call City of Bones, the first book, the skeleton for season one of Shadowhunters. And we still get from point A to point B, sort of, and you know, but the way we do so is a little bit different um, because we're a television show and we have a lot of time we're able to explain things while still keeping the story moving and bring in characters from future books add new characters that don't exist in the book series and really kind of utilize the medium of television to our advantage and, and make a new path to, for these characters how do you describe a rune? Like, what is it? Okay. We've been debating this. Yes, yes, all right. There were long discussions about this during shooting the pilot because this is what's so interesting about shooting a fantasy series that has such a mythology and so many different you know, terms and things. And we have to make the world, basically. And we have to all agree on what the world is. <laughs> so we had a long discussion about what the runes actually are. And we decided that they're not tattoos, but they're actually a brand or a burn into the skin okay. that really does literally scar the person and it's literally a, a mark that will be with them forever and so you can reactivate it. In episode one, you kind of get to see Clary's first rune, but she, you know, she's been healing for a couple days so it's pretty much healed up. But in episode three, Clary gets two more runes and, and when you look at them, they're very gruesome. You know, eventually they become um, like transfer tattoos mm -hmm. when we're putting them on every day on set. But when we're doing a scene where we first get the rune, it's actually a silicone piece I was going to ask, on. how long is that hair and makeup process? It's like a transfer tattoo that you get right. from a vending machine. You yeah. put it on, put some water on it, spray it to seal it up. Love it. And then it's on. It's on for the day. But when we have a scene where we're actually marking ourselves, it's a silicone piece that goes on and then it's painted by the special effects artist. And it, it's really kind of gruesome to see that on your on your arm when That's you're you know, doing a scene. What's it like to think about that like little girls and girls in general probably dress up like you for Halloween? That happened at Comic-Con. Really? Yeah. At Comic-Con there were a bunch of people dressed like Clary and Jace and Simon and Isabel and everybody was all ruined up and it was really amazing to see. That, that's when it first started to hit us, the enormity of the fandom and, mm -hmm. and how fierce they were. I mean, even Lily Collins, who played Clary yeah. in the film, she was a huge fan of the books mm -hmm. and the character. <laughs> Have you guys ever chatted about Clary? Or... I've never met Lily. Um, oh, you but guys I'm, love each other. I'm a huge fan of her work, and, and you know, I thought the film was a really, it was a different take than the television mm -hmm. series, but still a valid one on, on the show. So, um, I, I don't know, I'm a huge fan of Lily, so I, I have so much respect for her and all her work. This has never been in love. I'm willing to take that chance on you. I'd do anything for you. It's love that makes you fight harder for what you want. Okay, so what are you most excited for fans to get to see this season? Something I'm really looking forward to are the relationships to really grow. Because right now we're still kind of explaining the story and the world and setting up and establishing things. But right out of the gate, as things move on, the relationships really take the lead. And that's something that I think draws people to the Mortal Instruments and to Shadowhunters mm -hmm. more so than the fantasy are these characters and their humanity and their reality. And, you know, Clary in herself is really a, um, a very flawed heroine. She, uh, she makes mistakes and she makes sacrifices that aren't hers to make and there are consequences to her actions that she has to deal with throughout the season. But you know, something I'm really excited for people to see is episode 12. Um, I know it's a long way out, but bear the with me. The second to last the episode. The second to last episode. Something that doesn't necessarily happen in the books happens in this episode and it's really huge and means a lot for a lot of the characters and changes a lot and it's, it's a turning point for um, one of the favorite relationships on the show. And I won't reveal which, but it's it's really fantastic. And it's kind of something for fans of the books to look forward to. Yeah. It's different than yeah, what they've yeah. seen before. I mean, the relationships on this show are really um, essential and, and central to the series. 
especially even the the main love triangle with Simon, Clary, and Jay. Yeah, we haven't even talked about that. I can't believe I was going <laughs> to wrap up the interview without talking about Simon and how he's so clearly obsessed with Clary, and she seems to have no idea. Alberto and I kind of, when we were we were about to shoot, that was the first scene we shot together, the scene in the coffee shop. And we wanted to make sure we hit the right tone and establish their relationship in the right way. And uh, we got together in the hotel and we're just sitting down and worked on the scene a little bit. But then we just ended up having like a five hour conversation, just getting to know each other mm -hmm. and ended up establishing the relationship that way. That's and so it was cool. kind of the most organic way to, to get started. And it's one of my favorite memories from shooting. But you know, Simon, Clary and Jace's relationship, she can never really choose between the guys because they each represent a different side of who she is. You know, Jace challenges her and forces her to become this warrior, whereas Simon represents the human side of her and, and knows her better than she knows herself. So that horse race really becomes central to the story. The show is cast very well because each one of us has a quality that we can bring to our characters that nobody else could. Yeah, what do you, would you say is most similar within yourself to Clary? You know, Clary has this sort of um, fire inside of her and I know she has a passion for everything she does and and she's fiercely loyal to the people that she loves and I would like to think that I'm the same way you know I'm, I when I dive into something I dive in head first you are an angel Clary this is who you are no! I'm ready okay so what do you want to tackle next I'd like to I'd like to finish my master's degree and get that done but also I'm I'm really looking to find a project that's very grounded in reality because I've been doing so many projects that are supernatural mm -hmm. and futuristic and I want to find a project that delves into psychoanalysis of the characters and, and just really is more simplistic but it's all, all mind games. Congratulations Thank on you. the show and you guys you've got to tune in every Tuesday night Freeform formerly known Free as form. the ABC Family right after Pretty <laughs> Little Liars just stay there and watch Shadow Hunters. You're not going to regret it. <laughs> I'm Jocelyn Davis. Thanks for hanging with us at Clever, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. And if you want more Clever action, click to the left to find out where the cast of High School Musical is 10 years later. Or click to the right to see me cut my own hair and then cut Lily's hair on a crazy episode of Beauty Break.